Well, Mark, um, many congratulations on the on on the new role. Just 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 kind of talk us through it and how how you've got into the situation. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I'm obviously delighted to have been appointed as the director of cricket performance. Um, in a while now, really, a few weeks and uh, sort of three or four months of process, I suppose. Um, you know, once the news came out that Paul was finishing, I put my name in the hat and I've been through a fairly rigorous process to get to this point. Um, but you know, it was, it was a big learner for me as well. It was an interesting process to go through, and it's it's probably a job that I've I've had an eye on with regards to well, the, the style of job that I've had an, uh, an eye on for. Uh, for a while now with regards to just progressing my career and uh, I'm just delighted to have been successful and have been appointed so I just can't wait to get started. So kind of the route down to this kind of this type of role is where you see your kind of potential career going for this to plan? Yeah I mean I've never been a, a massive one for, for setting out goals for myself it's been a lot more around just trying to do a good job uh, day to day and trying to impact as much as I can and, and then I suppose uh, since my playing career ended, that's stood me in reasonable stead with, with, with the way I've progressed. But I did do a master's about five years ago, master's in sporting directorship, which was a, a bit more geared around to uh, the administrative side of the game and learning about governance and, and high performing organisations and uh, I suppose at a, a more of a strategic and management level. So. I suppose you don't put yourself through a two and a half year masters, which is pretty hard work if you don't ultimately see that that potential in yourself. And I suppose I, 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 I've always had that um, at the back of my mind. So although I haven't sort of gone out of the way to say I've got to be in this position at this point of time, and um, the way things have turned out, I've, I've now got an opportunity to do that. And in terms of the, the role, Mark, and the remit, are you able to just kind of give us a little insight as to how, how you see that working for you? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it slightly tweaked from, from Paul's. Um, Paul's role was obviously director of cricket. This, this job is director of cricket performance. Uh, I think largely that just means that not, not as much responsibility in the other side of the business. So, I mean, I've worked quite closely with the foundation for the last two years in my role anyway, trying to create some alignment about how our pathways and development looks and, and that's still an important part of this job but ultimately I think some responsibility will be taken away in that area and my focus will be largely around the men's and the women's and the pathway. Um, I look after the pathway really at the minute with, with Chris as head of talent pathway as part of my performance director role uh, but taking a, I suppose an overall strategic view of all, all things performance based uh, within the men's and women's game. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a broad role, but a really exciting one. And in terms of the pathway, Mark, I mean, that, that how, how significant is that to, to get it right for a club like that? Well, um, well, very. I mean, uh, ultimately, my, my belief, and I talked about this through the through the interview process, was that a considerable amount of uncertainty exists at the sort of higher level of county cricket with your with your with your better county players once they get into the realms of of pushing for ECB commitments and and then everything else that's coming alongside that now with uh, the franchise cricket and franchise world any strategic planning that you do you, you know there's going to be an element of uncertainty around it and my view and I think the view of the most people at the club is that to mitigate yourself against that to have a continuous stream of talent coming through almost an oversupply of, of cricketers is your best way to to sustain some success over a period of time so that's the that's why it's important um, we've always had a good pathway I suppose coming in two years ago and looking at it a little bit more closely about how we did things um, I've got my teeth into a bit and restructured certain things that we do and we'll just continue to try and push that forward but I feel we've got some really good foundations in place now to, to build on and in terms of the women's game at Lancashire as well, there's the, the significance of that now, perhaps greater than it's maybe ever been before. Yeah, and I suppose that, that that's an element of the job that I'm almost m most excited about because it's, it's not a world that, that, that I know that well. You know, you, you know that I've been in, immersed in men's professional cricket for the last five years and the men's pathway. We have connected a little bit with the women's pathway throughout this, the last two years and I have spoken to Paul and David, um, Paul Shaw and David Thorley a, a, a reasonable number of times but it is an area that I'm really looking forward to, to learning more about and then trying to offer some support to, um, to really drive things forward. I mean, 
it's just a real opportunity, isn't it? You know, you, you said yourself, in the way this summer has been, I think that's um, possibly the biggest opportunity that that, that I have uh, with this role. And you